Hi everybody and welcome to SA Rugby Magazine. Last show of the year before we, 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 we break. What, summer weather, Mark, uh, you got a fitness uh, thing you got to go for now? Fitness assessments, I've got a month to get it right. Nutritionist, dietitian, and, uh, and, and a weight training program. So when I come back in the new year, Dobbo will probably want to sign me up for the, for the last two matches. Uh, but no longer at the end of January will I be called a fat. But save, <laughs> save your money, save your money, don't go, just phone her, you're fat and fucked. <laughs> Sorry. God love you. Been one hell of a year, hey Mark? It has been. In the form she did ask me the alcohol consumption, and I just put regularly. <laughs> I pissed an olive the other night. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just been a what a crazy year, and um, hopefully next year will bring a bit, a bit of sanity because this year has just been unbelievable. Well, uh, and the craziness just continues. The Bulls are flying high uh, in the Curry Cup, favourites to win it. And a game that going to Kimberley would have been tough, but I would have backed them to get the five league points, and that kind of would have set them up for the home final, yeah. which will be decisive uh, in, in this competition. And game called off because of COVID. Uh, two points uh, all. So you don't know in the next three weeks how many games are going to get called off. <laughs> so I see cricket has already stalled their four-day competition because of COVID. Too many teams going down with it. What's going to happen in the next two or three weeks, you know, with the rugby? And then as much as people try and make a good spectacle out of it and are getting hyped, the 19th of December, the 26th of December, and we're playing rugby matches yeah. on a Saturday afternoon, the public just aren't that as much as I, I chat to people, I'm not they're trying to get into it, they just can't get into it. You know, and in the absence of cricket, they say, let's watch a bit of rugby. But I saw a, a report the other day that all the US sports were down by 50% in television audience. Uh, the UK sports are down, our sports are down. People don't want to watch a sport with no people at the, at the ground. And I know for broadcasting purposes and for kind of broadcasting deals, these matches had to happen. But I really do also think it's- If they hadn't happened, Mark, there would have been so many bankrupt businesses, so With, sports franchises. No, without a doubt. So it had to happen. But it's it's as if you get that feeling they've got to you've got to go out and just play these games and get them over with. And, and that's that's what we're seeing, I think, in the Premier League. And I mean, I've been a lot. Of, I, I I chose one out of ten games. I've never, even when I was the worst gambler in the world, I've never chosen one out of ten. I mean, the Premier League is a is a league that's going through its motions. I think the first time I saw a team celebrate uh, was uh, when Liverpool beat Tottenham. You can see how much it meant to them, but I mean, other than that, you've never seen, you don't see the guys rushing over when someone scores. The VAR has taken that, taken a bit of that enjoyment away. Uh, the rugby empty stadiums, I know we joke about the empty stadiums before, but at least we had the option to avoid rugby. Uh, we don't even have that pleasure anymore. So it's been one crazy year. It has, and if you look at all the, the reports that come out of sports psych psychiatrists and psychologists and the impact of fans and no fans and, and, and the adrenaline that teams play on with yeah. fans, but also the accountability towards fans. You go down a try early or go early, you get back to behind your, <laughs> near your supporters and they tell you what they think of you, it kind of spurs you on. They say there's no accountability, it's like a training run, they go two goals down and it's, let's write this one off till next week, you know? So, and, and you look at that kind of, fr those freakish results we've seen in, in rugby, we've seen them in soccer, 7-2, yeah, uh, seven, two, six, one, yeah. you know, it's, no. It ordinarily wouldn't happen, and uh, spending spending down uh, forty percent across the board on on on, on, on uh, in, in say in Italy in Syria on free tra on uh, tra on transfers, uh, you know it's down everywhere. Uh, and then and then you also you go back and it's not just here. We had bulls being cancelled against Greek was uh, the big one that everyone was looking forward to was uh, was Exeter against Toulouse. Mm. Uh, started the the, the, the European defence COVID cancelled as well. Uh, they don't know if that game will be played again. Can they fit it in? So, and to make and to make it even worse, we now get a guy like this Jake Paul guy coming. Uh, you know, uh, Connor's a bit of a barbarian, but this Jake Paul and this YouTuber, what a tosser! I mean, what, well, he would have just been bitch slapped in my days. And I, and, you know, I hate to say this, but I don't get this new generation. And I suppose I'm not supposed to get it, like my dad didn't get me. But the things he said about Connor's wife about Dana, Dana, Dana White. Love him or leave him, Dana White's an accomplished entrepreneur and a businessman. All this guy is famous for is fucking being on YouTube. And being crass. And being crass. Sorry about my language, but I mean, that's what he's famous for. Him and his brother. I mean, if, that is the, if that's what people are looking up to and the new generation of kids are looking up to, 
My God, humanity. Well, that, that, he's ranked and doesn't deserve a boxing ring. It deserves an alley and a bitch slap. Yeah. That's all it is. Yes. You know, and uh, it's just, it's again, there's, there's such a way to taunt a, a bloke in sport that has class, that has pizzazz. You look at how Tyson Fury plays with Anthony Joshua and vice versa. They're promoting when they will eventually fight. It gets to a point, but it doesn't go across that line. I mean, just I, I, I watched the first 30 seconds of his call out to, to McGregor. It was just disgusting. And um, yes. there was just no finesse to it. There was no cleverness to it. And um, forget the boxing ring. I'd like to see them in the octagon. And well, no, no, I'd like to take that cigar and shove it right up his ass. You know? Yeah. You, it wouldn't be the first time someone's blown smoke up his ass, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking of blowing it. Ah, uh, exactly. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we're living in that. Now we've got, we've got rugby dementia. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that, Mark. I mean, I played rugby. I knew the risks. I didn't need a doctor to come and tell me that I might have. I mean, we, we all knew the risks. I, I'd, seen, I'd seen players before me that had broken collarbones, that had had, uh, you know, that were a little bit punch drunk. My thing is, if you knew the risks and you played the game, don't come back now and, and say that you weren't, uh, there wasn't enough research and all that stuff done. It's it, it just, this... I, it, it reminds me very much of, and we go back 20 years, to the search between every smoking tobacco company being sued because mm -hmm. people were dying of lung cancer and said, I didn't realize this would happen to me. Yeah. So they had to put this concerted effort in and smoking kills. If you touch the cigarette, it's likely that you could die. Oh, thank Mark. In those days, in the, in the, in the black and white days, um, and, uh, <coughs> and you can YouTube this as well, there used to be doctors that used to advise people to have a cigarette. I mean, such was the, was the, was the level of, of, uh, of corruption, I suppose, and, and lack of research. So I can, under, I can understand people that in the black and white days, like in the 50s, or when advertising came out and doctors were sitting behind their desk smoking a cigarette, I can understand them suing. But after that, everybody knew. Yeah, but I'm saying it got cleaned up and it's like anyone now, you know, if you take a cigarette, there's a potential consequence that's going to be detrimental to your health and you could die. And if, 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 if Zoom is having a way, then we're going to be paying about 27 <laughs> rand a, uh, a cigarette. cigarette yeah. No. It, now, if you look at the rugby thing, the players that are, that are kind of have got together, there's more than 100 of them, yeah. uh, their careers would have ended 10 years ago. Uh, and it's really only been in the last five to 10 years that there's been this massive this massive uh, educational approach within rugby towards concussion and awareness around it, towards head injuries, protocols that have been put in place. Uh, a lot of people say that there's still not enough protocols in place, but if you look at the nature of the game, it would be a little bit like ice hockey, it would be a little bit like other collision sports. You've got to redefine the whole game if you want to take that out of it now. Um, mm. The best that they do is say... Has the game, Mark, has the game become too much of a collision sport? I think and it rather has. Rather than a contact sport. Yeah. I and you got, sorry, you've got athletes that are, that are training to be professionals because it's going to be their career. I mean, the collisions that I've seen on rugby fields are nothing from when I played. I mean, I, I mean, I mean they're far more greater now. They're far more dangerous and stuff like that. And wasn't that always the danger of the evolution of this game? That it was going to keep evolving to a state that we had to, that we had to look at evolving it somehow? Well, if you go back to rugby, outlawing rugby, yeah. it was for player health. And that was your back. If you were lying on the wrong side of the ball, you just got right, okay? I, I gave the person the odd slipper as well, Mark, you know. But it's nothing to the head, like it was football. all on your back. Yeah. Now, rucking's outlawed, but running 40 meters and With smoking a bloke yeah. who's effectively protecting a ball yeah. is, is, is legal. Yeah. So what's changed for me in the game, I look back at some of the great games in the 80s, early 90s, 70s. You never saw five on five with a ball in the middle waiting. It's like gridiron. And guys just hitting each other and hitting each other, not going to the head, but trying to take each other out, and then the ball gets played. Mm. That to me is that if they're going to clean up the game, they've got to change that whole ruck law. Yeah. And it's got to be bring back rucking, nothing to the head, the quickness of the ball will be there, and kind of get a more flamboyant style of rugby going again. Because at the moment, it is just a dormant set piece that when that ball's there, you can't get away from it, and it's biggest man wins. And, and you know, it's one of the They've tried to sell rugby to the world for years, but they kept, they've kept changing the laws all the time. They're the only sport, I, we, we, rugby's the only sport I know that's kept changing its laws, but in a lot of ways, 
have gone backwards in terms of the efficacy of, of the uh, the efficacy of the, of the law changes, because you're right. The the, the ruck was a self-regulating thing. If you were on the wrong side of the ruck, you could you you, you would go into the shower at the end of the game, and every all your teammates would just laugh at you, and it'd be a, it'd be one of those battle scars, those battle scars that you'd wear as a medal. You'd have like three rake marks, like Freddy Krueger just giving you a massage right down. <laughs> yeah, and it was the the, the 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 great forwards always. It was like you said, as a, a badge of honor. They come up oh. and they say, "We took the chance. We protected the ball, but we got something to show for it." Oh. But you'd maybe do it once or twice in a game and decide not not anymore today. Mm. And there was more space for attack. And uh, and there was a bit of ooh and ah watching the guy get rucked out. And there was nothing. There was nothing lacking in physicality because that's the one thing. You go back to the glory days pre-professionalism. Mm. Tough buggers played the game. It was still a physical game, but as you say, it was a contact sport. Now it is just one crash course collision. It's two bumper cars just going at each other all the time. And the human body wasn't designed to be tensed up at a ruck, waiting for a 120 kilogram thunderbolt to hit you yeah. from the side, from the top, and the referee says, play on. And so it's not even just the effect of a blow to the head. It's what the, every jar is doing in terms of whiplash and that. To, to the head injury. So I think there's a hell of a lot to look at. And I, I also believe that the essence of what rugby was supposed to be has certainly been lost, more so in the last five years. And then when you get great players like Christian Cullen and uh, that era saying, geez, to play in today's game, I don't think we would have been tough or strong enough. Tommy Horan saying the same thing. They would have survived any era through their skill. But what they're saying is this isn't the game we grew up with and loved and started no. playing. No. And, um you know, the, 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 the fallout from this is going to be, especially in this world where fake news uh, runs r rampant and, and people are influenced by what they read on, 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 on media, is, is, you know, all this, this fallout from this thing is going to have a, a horrible effect on the, the growth and development of rugby and, and attracting rugby players to the... To the, to the well, well, especially in the youth. Like, why would you send your kid in who has aspirations to be a professional athlete and you know the possibilities at 28 you're going to have dementia, at 30 you're not going to remember a game, at 35 you're going to have bleeding on the brain, at 40 you'll probably be dead. Is that five years going to be worth it? And uh, mm -hmm. you know if you looked at all the studies that were done in, in Gridiron, there was initially the guys were 70, then it started getting 60 down to 50 mm -hmm. to 40. I think what's very relevant about this core group of players that have kind of laid the claim against world rugby is they're not 60 or 70 years old, they're 40, 35, 34. Mm. And, and some of the stories, you hear the stories are quite horrific of what they've I, been yeah, through. I don't, I don't for a minute try and take away from what they've gone through. But I, I do think if you know, if you want to be a professional rugby player, and this is, I'm sure we will, rugby will argue it, it's your choice. Yeah. No one's forcing you to play this game as a profession. And if you play this game, the risk is that you could die. And you could have early Absolutely. dementia, you could have kind of brain damage because of the way that the sport is played. The only alternative to, and then sign the form, in, 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 uh, then they have no claim post their career. The only way I see that changing is if rugby is looked at and completely redefined as a sport. And then as Dwayne Vermeulen said last week, don't we rather just want to play a game of touchies? Mm -hmm. When the two yellow cards came out for kind of a little bit too much physicality. No. So, uh, or Tana Umaga said many years ago to Craig Joubert, do you want to play Tiddly Winks or do you want to play rugby? What, which one are we playing today? You know, so I think that this is, it's going to cause a re rethink, but I, for now, don't see too much changing in terms of the way the game's played. And I just see a lot more injuries happening and a lot more sad stories coming out over yeah, the years. And I, I'm not going to be sucked into this political, correct, neoliberal stuff of, of where, you know, we've got to, where we start to take a collective of players that have played and now suing. And now have you know that we've got to make all these massive changes, and I just don't, I just don't see it. I don't agree with them. I think that they knew the risks, and uh, it's horrible what's happened, but uh, unlucky.